In this video, we'll talk about the lipid profile test and how to interpret the report. Your doctor might have prescribed a lipid profile test and you see there are different terminologies in that report like LDL, HDL, VLDL and uh, triglycerides. But how to interpret that result? So in this video, we are going to break down all of these things for you and tell you the biology behind that. So this is a lipid profile test and you can see there are different test names in the left hand side and that there are specific values provided on the right hand side in unit of mg per deciliter and also a normal range or a biological range is provided but how to correlate this data with a clinical condition or how to analyze risk based on a report all these things would be discussed in this video so stay tuned till the end so in our body we have different lipoprotein particles they are named as chylomicron, VLDL, IDL, LDL, HDL, etc. So all of these are lipoprotein. That, that means they have some amount of lipid and some amount of protein. And that is how our lipid is transported across the body. In terms of composition, all of these uh, lipoprotein particle differs from each other. For example, chylomicron is highly enriched in triglycerides. Also, VLDL is highly enriched in triglycerides. In contrast, LDL is highly concentrated with cholesterol particles. Whereas in HDL, the maximum portion is the protein part. So, all of this is secreted from the intestine, liver or maybe both. So, your doctor would say LDL is kind of like a bad cholesterol, whereas HDL is a good cholesterol. But do you know why is so? Is it true? But how? The primary function of LDL particle is to provide cholesterol to the peripheral tissue and it would be really useful for making hormones. For example, your liver secretes LDL and that is acting on or that is providing cholesterol to testis or let's say adrenal gland. So, in the adrenal gland, using cholesterol present in the LDL, all the adrenal steroid hormones would be synthesized, such as aldosterone, cortisol, or other hormones. In the testis as well, your major male steroid hormone, testosterone, would be synthesized using cholesterol. So, LDL-derived cholesterol is super important for normal biological processes and function of the body. So, LDL is damn important. But why does doctor call it bad? LDL is good, but too much LDL is bad. When LDL is too much, it deposits on the artery wall and can create plaques and it increases the risk of heart attack. Now, HDL is kind of involved in cleaning up that pluck and it's known as reverse cholesterol transport. So, that is why HDL can pick up cholesterol from the atherogenic deposits and then it can return it to the liver for recycling purposes. And that's why HDL is certified as the good cholesterol. Now, once LDL is produced in the liver, it would be utilized by several organs and that's crucial we have seen that that's why ldl is not bad but too much of ldl is bad when ldl gets deposited into arteries and other spaces then it can cause harm otherwise ldl is important now hdl is a reservoir for apolipoproteins hdl can uptake unesterified cholesterol HDL helps in esterification of cholesterol as well and HDL takes part in reverse cholesterol transport. That means picking up cholesterol from any other places and returning it back to the liver for recycling purposes. That's why HDL is really good for our body. Now, HDL picks up cholesterol from this particular atherogenic plaque where LDL has deposited excess amount of cholesterol. LDL, HDL then move to the circulation and return it into the liver. And this selective transfer is known as, the by the term, reverse cholesterol transport. Once it is inside the liver, the cholesterol can be 
utilized to produce cholic acid which would be used to produce bile salt or bile that means the cholesterol is now recycled or repurposed for another production so we can take a example to understand this process better imagine these garbage trucks are ldl so generally these garbage trucks go to the dump yard and dump their garbage so these garbage trucks are ldl and your dump yard is nothing but several organs like uh, adrenal gland or let's say your testis so whenever they dump it in the dump yard things get recycled repurposed and things are produced from there right so cholesterol is dumped into the testis and it it, it is used to like produce steroid hormones like testosterone but problem occurs when this uh, this garbage depositing truck is dumping the garbage in the road side and you can imagine these roads are actually arteries and when there is accumulation of garbage that can cross, cause problems like that can increase the traffic or etc similar thing happens in our artery as well so it's a very sim, uh, important metaphor to understand this process overall the big risk for <clears throat> increased ldl level is deposition of excess cholesterol in the artery and thereby narrowing the artery wall which can constrict the blood flow this increases the chances of heart attack and that's pretty alarming right now the biggest question is how to keep ldl and ldl low and hdl high if we avoid all type of oily processed deep fried food then our ldl would be automatically low instead we can uh, we can kind of have a healthy choice like olive oil healthy homemade food more salads vegetables etc in this way our ldl level could be low whereas if we do daily exercises then our hdl level would boost up so all it matters for us is the ratio between ldl and hdl so hdl should be high and ldl should be low anyway if these uh, other things doesn't work dietary modification or lifestyle modification then doctors might prescribe medicines which generally blocks the rate limiting step of cholesterol biosynthesis process and thereby reducing the level of ldl cholesterol in the blood Let's talk about triglycerides which is another thing in your lipid profile test reports. Now what does high triglyceride mean is it good or bad so let's try to understand this. So triglycerides are a compound which are made up of glycerol and fatty acids so basically they are esters of fatty acids and glycerol. Triglycerides might have uh, saturated fatty acids in their a uh, fatty acid part or unsaturated fatty acids as well so question is what does our body do with the triglyceride in general body produces triglyceride and this triglyceride is kind of stored in the adipose tissue for future that means it's kind of like a reserve for energy in in in, in terms of like a future use so you can have triglyceride stored for future and whenever your body needs it can utilize that triglyceride to generate energy they can also provide cushion for your body and that is kind of like a, in terms of fat in the adipose tissue now it's like your reserve money you save it for now and you can use it for different purposes right like you can use your wallet to pay for your drink shopping movies other bills but when you have excess amount of money even after all of these things you would save it for the future right our body does the same when it has too much of a uh, triglyceride it save it for the future now let me tell you that these kind of stored triglyceride can be used in times when our body is going through stress like let's say starving when our body is going through starving no nutrient is present in that time the triglyceride is broken down from the adipose tissue and it is channeled back to the liver where fatty acids are oxidized to generate atp and that atp gets us going help us in all the metabolic processes 
Now, the particle which is highly enriched in triglyceride is chylomicron and VLDL. So, chylomicron has 90% of triglyceride, whereas VLDL has 60% of triglyceride. So, if you see in your uh, blood uh, lipid test report, if your VLDL is increased, that means also it's correlate with your triglyceride level. Now, let's talk about what really happens with these chylomicron particle or VLDL particle. So, this gets uptaken by the adipose tissue and this is produced actually by liver. So, these triglycerides can come from food that we eat, the fatty food, the processed uh, food that we get, the cheesy ones. But also, liver cell can produce triglycerides by specific biochemical process. And that can be secreted in uh, terms of VLDL. And this VLDL particle is important and it also supplies triglyceride to different body parts. Now, triglyceride biosynthesis happens when you are very well fed, when you eat too much of sugar, when you eat too much of processed fat. All of these cases, triglyceride synthesis can be triggered. But high triglyceride is again a big problem. Moderate level of triglyceride is good, but high triglyceride may contribute to hardening of the artery wall and ultimately called arteriosclerosis. This increases the chance of restricted blood flow and thereby heart attack. For, uh, so this is increasing the chances of stroke, heart attack and all the cardiac diseases. Extremely high level of triglyceride can also cause acute inflammation in the pancreas and it can cause pancreatitis. Question is how to interpret the lipid report. So there would be a normal biological range provided and you have to understand where do your uh, test result fall. For example, in this case, the test result is 250 mg per deciliter and that is quite high, right? If it is beyond 200, we can see from the reference values it is high. That means this individual needs immense exercise or medically control the triglyceride level. Then let's talk about what are the cause of high triglycerides. First of all, you eat more calories than you burn and you don't have enough amount of exercise in your daily routine. That can be a leading cause. Also can conditions like obesity, drinking too much of alcohol, uncontrolled diabetes, all of these can lead to high level of triglyceride in the blood. In addition to that, sedentary lifestyle with consumption of refined sugars can really increase your triglyceride level. So, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, food with refined sugar, work-life stress, all can add up to your increased triglyceride in the lipid uh, profile test. And ultimately, it would risk your, heart, uh, risk your heart and it can increase the risk of stroke and heart attack. So, what are the ways to reduce triglyceride and how to become fit from a fat? So, basically, exercise has no other alternatives to reduce triglycerides. When you do exercise, all of your triglyceride reserves would be utilized and used up by the body and thereby the triglyceride amount would be reduced. Daily 30 minutes of exercise is kind of uh, recommended by FDA as well. Exercising would help you to burn that extra calorie and especially if you have a sedentary job, doing some exercise, freehand exercise in between work is highly recommended. Other than that, having healthy food and avoiding unhealthy food would be a good way to reduce both cholesterol and triglyceride. And last but not the least, if you eat cut down the alcohol consumption or if we kind of like modify the amount of alcohol we take that can also cut down our triglyceride level. Recently intermittent fasting is quite popular to reduce triglyceride level because you are giving your body an artificial stress environment by not eating for a certain window of time and in that window if it is long enough your reserves or your fat reserves would burn and it would provide you energy during your fasting regime. And now 
intermittent fasting is a really popular method by which you can reduce your cholesterol, triglyceride, etc. without even doing any kind of medications. So if you want to learn more about intermittent fasting and the associated health benefit, you can click on the video in the i button. Also, if you want to learn about triglyceride in details or apolipoprotein in details, all the links are provided in the i button. Now, medications are available to reduce serum triglycerides. When exercise doesn't work or the level is abnormally high, immediate treatment is required and these medications would actually block the way uh, by which the tissue actually uptakes uh, triglyceride. So in this video, we are not going to talk much about the medication part, but we kind of covered the harmful effects of excess amount of LDL and triglyceride in your blood. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thanks. Do let me know in the comment whether these videos are useful for you. Thank you.